Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share a direct comparison between the Fractal Audio FM3 and the Camper Stage. First of all, we will hear the two units in action with a demo song, then we will compare the technical characteristics of the two units with a very detailed comparison chart, then we will hear more sounds in the dedicated section of this video, and finally I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please subscribe and hit the bell, it's gonna really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start with the demo song. Now check the main differences between the two units among the following parameters. Amps and caps built-in, support for third-party IRs, number of presets, number of effects, effect chain management, MIDI availability, type of audio inputs and outputs, number of foot switches and external controllers input, screen, looper and drum machine characteristics, ADA conversion and USB support, special features available in both the units, current power dimension, weight and price. As regards amps, caps and mics, we have 277 amps, more than 2000 cab IRs, with the possibility to have two cabs at once for the FM3. Furthermore, the FM3 cabinet simulator block can load up to two impulse responses with a specific function that allows us to visually align the phase or to adapt the room size to our needs. On the other hand, the camper offers more or less 280 profiles included in the box with hundreds of other profiles that you can download from the web. Here we have maybe the biggest difference between the two units. In fact, the FM3 follows the fractal audio modeling philosophy that try to mimic the behaves of each component of an amp, where with the camper you capture the sound of an amp and cap and their interaction with the profiling procedure. Basically, Fractal Audio and Camper are maybe the best representatives of these two philosophies, followed, for instance, by Line 6 that is using the Fractal Audio philosophy and Moore that is more close to the Camper philosophy. So here I would give a thumbs up to both the unit. Both the unit supports third-party IRs where the FM3 has 1024 slots where to load them 
and 297 are offered by the Kemper stage, if I understood it well. Both Fractal and Kemper offers scarce details about the quality of the IR you can load. They should be at 48kHz for the FM3 and 44.1 kHz for the Kemper. I was not able to find out the maximum length of the IR that can be loaded in the FM3, but with firmware updates we should be able to load the ultra res IR of the Axe FX3. So here I would give a thumbs up to the FM3 as it offers more user slots and the kilohertz is higher. We then have uh, 412 presets in FM3 and 125 banks each of 5 presets in the camper stage. The FM3 offers also 8 scenes for each preset where each scene is a specific combination of parameters of the signal chain, while the camper offers 125 performances, each of which can hold up to 5 rigs. For instance, we can use a performance to store the sounds dedicated to the intro, verse, refrain, bridge and solo of a song, and switch between them using a foot controller. Here I would say that they are on pair, offering us plenty of possibilities to arrange our sounds and rigs. As regards effects, the FM3 offers more than 250 effects with a really rich variety of different effects, like for instance a multiband compressor or a talk box, that are pretty rare effects in these types of unit. The camper, on the other hand, offers almost 80 effects, like for instance 11 overdrives and booster, 3 choruses, 9 reverse, 18 delays, and so on. So I would give a thumbs up to the FM3 as it offers more effects. Another important difference between the two units is that with FM3 you can arrange the effects in a matrix of 12 by 4 blocks, where with the camper you have 12 blocks one after the other, with 4 blocks before the amp cap block and 4 after. So the camper is simpler but much more rigid. With FM3 you have a lot of flexibility in building your signal chain. So as regards effects I would say that the FM3 is superior, both for the number of effects offered and also for the flexibility that it offers in placing effects in the signal chain. If you want to know how many effects you can place in the FM3 signal chain, you can check out my demo review about the FM3 in the card above or description below. Both the units offer a MIDI in and out. As regards input and outputs, the FM3 has a guitar input, a stereo effect loop, a balanced stereo output and an headphone output, where in the camper stage you have a guitar input, a balanced stereo output and also an unbalanced one and a stereo effects loop. It's worth noticing that the camper offers also an interesting effect loop configuration with four balanced returns in TRS format and two cents. Here the camper is better in my opinion. As regard foot switches and external controllers, the camper is far superior with more foot switches and more external controllers that can be connected to the unit. The screen of the FM3 is far superior, no doubt here, the camper has a really old style screen. The looper of the FM3 offers longer loops support with 120 seconds against the 60 seconds offered by the camper stage. No drum machine are available for neither of the two units. As regards ADA conversions and USB capability, the FM3 offers 24-bit at 48kHz conversion with 114dB of dynamic range. I was not able to find the technical characteristics of the camper converters other than it has a 108dB of dynamic range, so FM3 converters should be better. Furthermore, the FM3 can be used as a USB audio interface where the camper stage USB connection cannot be used to transmit audio. Under for the camper needs an audio interface to be connected to a computer via SBDIF or the analog output. Here I have no doubt saying that the FM3 is better. As regards special features, I would mention the synth available in the FM3 along with the simulation of microphones preamps, which is pretty cool. And on the other hand, the possibility to profile your amp that the camper stage offers. And I would prefer the special feature of the camper as the profiling procedure is pretty cool. They both offer an internal PSU. Here a pretty cool feature would have been to have current output for feeding external effects. Considering the prices of these units, well, I would expect something similar. As regards dimension and weight, obviously the FM3 is smaller 
and lighter, considering that it has only three foot switches. As regards the price, well, the FM3 is cheaper, but adding an FC6 and so having something similar to the camper stage in terms of foot switches, you are gonna spend more in euro and a similar amount of money in dollars. Here I would put a thumbs down to both the units as they are pretty pricey units. So all in all, we have 10 greens and 5 reds for the FM3 and 6 greens and 9 reds for the camper. Obviously, this is just a technical comparison without considering that each feature could have a different importance for you. And so, for instance, the camper could be better just because it has more full switches or the FM3 could be better just because it has a more flexible effect signal chain. But if we just algebraically sum the red and green thumbs, the FM3 is better. Now final considerations here, and please notice that this is gonna be my personal opinion for my specific use cases, and of course you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. Let me start from the stronger selling points in my opinion of each unit against the other. First of all, the FM3 can be used as an audio interface and can be connected directly to a computer for recording purposes, while with the camper stage you need an audio interface. Then the FM3 has more effects and a more flexible management of the effect chain. On the other hand, the camper is more, I would say, ready to be used live, with its higher number of foot switches, where with the FM3, basically, in my opinion, you need the external controllers to be used live. The camper stage offers also more connectivity options with both balanced and unbalanced outs and with its double effect loop thanks to its two cents and four returns. But the main difference, in my opinion, is in the different modeling philosophy Fractal Audio and Camper have adopted and in the consequences of this choice. The Fractal FM3 try to mimic each component of the signal chain of an amp and cab 
and offers us infinite amount of parameters that we can tweak and with which we can experiment. While with the camper, basically, you are going to profile an amp and you have a very faithful recreation of that specific sound. So basically, if you have a specific amp sound in mind, you don't want to spend too much time tweaking parameters and you want a solution plug and play already ready also for live use, the camper is your unit. On the other hand, if you are someone who likes experimenting with amp sounds and effects, who need a solution for recording his guitar at home, the Fractal FM3 is for you. All in all, both the units are superb and are really great options. And well, I can decide which one to get. Well, I have to say that finally there is one of these two units that gives me the sensation that I have more room to grow with it. I mean, that can be tweaked and adapted to my changing needs, that offers more effects and flexibility in the signal chain. And that forced me to experiment with AMP, tweaking them and search for new sounds. And this is the FM3. I may change my mind in future and maybe in different circumstances, but if I had to choose today, I would lean towards the FM3. Nevertheless, don't get me wrong, as I said, both the units are great options and in fact here we have la creme de la creme of the AMP modeling technology. But now it's your turn, I really need to know your opinions. Which one is the best option for you? Is the sound difference between the two units a key deciding factor for you? Is there any feature offered by these two units that is very important for you and that maybe I didn't mention? Please, let me know your opinions in the comment below. As you know, I really think that your comments are very, very important and valuable and can enrich this video, helping other guitarists to make the right choice according to their needs. So these were my final two cents. We have now reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. It would be of a great help. And please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you're interested in my music, please follow the link to a playlist of songs of mine in the description below. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.